So the Grunts Life showing in Long Beach. Great experience. There was the American Legion was out there, the Women's Auxiliary, a bunch of people cooking food. Thank you so much for coming in here. Came in here last minute and, um, and uh, put a, a silky psych together. Um, thank you to Mama Cindy over here, humble little lady. She runs the Reverend Warriors. I want to thank the American Legion for hosting us and the auxiliary. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having us here. Really grateful. This is an awesome spot. And there was a bunch of you know, older gentlemen at the bar. I met the post commander and the vice commander and a couple of the other ones, all, all, all Vietnam vets. We walk into um, the place. They're so receptive, so grateful to have us in there. You know, bringing the young people into the post because they know their posts are fucking dying. All over the country, the posts are being uh, shut down. We were equally grateful for each other, them letting us do it in there, you know, show our movie. The whole point of these things is connection and friendship. And if you are one of the more outgoing people in the room, and I ask that you take it upon yourself to go look at the people who are not outgoing, because they're really easy to spot, they usually like not talking to anybody, uh, and go uh, introduce yourself and talk to them and then start. Everyone can, can help facilitate connections if you just make an effort to. So, um, please help do that. And then the whole community network that we create here becomes more powerful. They had the whole thing, giant fucking screen, big speakers, computer laptop set up, everything's ready to go. They did it for us, so it was, it was, it was great to meet them and, and you know, talk through how important this is for the posts, for their survival. The guys sitting in the chairs, the younger guys sitting there watching it, the fans of the show and the pe new people who knew and interested. There's a bunch of new people, they'd never seen it before. They were fucking dying. They were dying except for some of the wives or girlfriends. They were sitting there like this. And they kept, kept looking over at their loved one. As, as he's fucking <laughs> healed over laughing. That powerful laughter, right? I'm, I'm just focused on those people as we're sitting there in the, in the theater. And, but some of the old people uh, were laughing. And that, I, that really got me going is when I saw some of them. Some of the guys saw the post commander i saw him laughing i saw it got you sir one of them was this older gentleman uh, older marine he was really really excited vietnam vet start the movie he's staying at his table towards the back of the room and he's sitting there like this the whole time and i keep like kept i kept looking at him the whole time trying to see you know what's going on with him thing ends i'm talking to a bunch of people about it i see the older gentleman see him and he's the only he's the only one of of the people from the post who didn't come up and talk to me he was avoiding me and i knew it and so i went over there and, hey how you doing sir how'd you like it how'd you like the movie and he was uh well <clears throat> i could definitely uh could definitely see how you put a lot of thought into it and uh, a lot of hard work went into it uh, definitely and, uh, and I can respect that. But, uh, but, uh, and I was like, oh, was it too much for you? Too much? We take it a little too far sometimes? And he was like, well, uh, yeah, 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 that's, that's okay, that's okay, you, you know, but, uh, it just really made the Marine Corps look bad yeah, at times. Seriously, bro, fuck the Marine Corps. And I was like, but is that that bad a thing? Does anyone? like looking uh, ugly in the morning? <laughs> no, nobody does. But it's humbling, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Fuck yeah, it is. So I was like, yeah, but is it that bad? What's the big deal? And I was like, well, uh, you know, the Marine Corps' uh, you know, reputation of being uh, you know, honorable and uh, you know, things of that nature. And I'm like, but does it? We fucking, the Banana Wars? Just fucking slaying natives for bananas. The fucking. He kept going on about you know, you know we're noble and this and that and all the time. Or you no, know, we need to have that image or something. And I was like, yeah, but it's it's also kind of damaging to to the military community if if we think that we need to think and operate according to Marine Corps rules. That organization means as little to us as we do to them means as little to us 
as we do to them. Fuck the Marine Corps. That's how insignificant that should be as a guiding factor in your life. Because it's an unhealthy mindset to like to live with the, the, the Marine Corps controlling any aspect of your life. Like that needs to it's not, cease to be a thing because it's not good for mental health because the military mindset is just not healthy. It's like thinking about constantly worried about what everybody else is thinking because your reputation follows you everywhere, blah, blah, blah. I didn't say all this shit to him. I think we finished by saying, I said something like, look, if, if Marine Corps recruiting is affected by our movie, then the Marine Corps has got way bigger fucking problems than just this movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Filmmaking is powerful, but this movie is not going to hurt recruiting. If anything, it'll encourage it. It'll fucking totally fucking encourage it. Are you kidding me? We already get fucking people telling us that, um, hey, I was on the fence about it, but after watching your guys' shit, I'm definitely joining the fucking military. And we're just like, yeah, motherfucker. And so like, you know, this film will attract people who are intrigued by the thought of warfare, which like, don't you kind of need those people to defend the country? Hmm. People who are willing to do violence on your behalf, would you need them? So if we're attracting them, is that good? I think, are we like forgetting about what like warfare entails? Because no one's talking about it. What an environment that is and what it does to your psyche. So I didn't say all that to the guy. I said, um, I am very thankful that you, you still watched it. You still, even if you didn't like it, you still powered through it. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, so I do appreciate it and I will, and I, what did I say? I said, you know, we are truly trying to do something good with this film uh, because, you know, not only is it getting these guys to laugh, which is important for their mental health, but it's getting them to laugh about some things that uh, maybe they hadn't thought about, dealt with in a while, which encourages conversation, which is a really fucking healthy thing. Expression is the opposite of repression, I think, pretty sure. And I actually just made that up. <laughs> we're encouraging veterans, combat veterans to express themselves and we're bringing them together in groups to come watch this thing that they all laugh at, which laughter connects people. So it's like we're encouraging connection at these events. Humor, Humor is this natural connector and uh, it's a natural facilitator of goodwill because we're all, at least all the people who show up to, to any event I'm involved in, we're all thinking these funny things that we want to say, but we're not sure if we can say it because somebody might be offended or somebody might not take it the right way. Um, but when you finally break the ice and say something, you take that risk, you risk not being rejected, right? When you finally take that risk and say it and they laugh, you're both like, oh, fuck. I knew, I thought you were cool. And that is, um, that's a powerful thing. That, that, that is the power of the humor within our community. And also, what's important in the long term for mental health, if we're, we're trying to understand this community, you should, you gotta study them. You can watch a group of people watch the movie and be out of their chairs with laughter and you're appalled. And so just think, what is going on in their brain if they're laughing at those things? What does this laughter mean? Could be a number of things. One of them could be it's them delaying pain, right? Yeah, I and mean, that's a lot of what laughter is for me personally. I joke about the things that are the most painful for myself. So I deal with it. And that's why I do that with, with all serious topics. That's why I love making comedy out of tragedy. I love thinking about a situation, something tragic and thinking, how can I make a fucking wicked parody of that? So then what was it that you appreciated about what you just saw? Um, the ability to find humor in tragedy and in, in trauma. I've had a lot of trauma and all kinds of crazy shit in my life. And just because I wasn't in war in that kind of conflict, I was still able to identify and feel those feelings of making light of that situation. Yeah. And being able to laugh through it and not let it consume you and control you and come down on you, but laugh about it, because what are you going to do? So that's just the way my, my brain goes. You know, I make jokes about grandma dying all the time. All the time. 
Why? Because I know that it's inevitable. I know that it's close. And I know that when it happens, it's going to be the worst pain that I have uh, probably felt in my life. I know it's coming. And I choose to joke about it. It deflects the pain. Don't judge us for making this movie. Um, instead, ask the question, why are they laughing? Try to have that question answered as a means of understanding us better. Right? So this is what I had, stuff I had been saying. And then, at this event, I spoke to a woman, elderly woman, gray hair, and who called me over. Um, the soldiers that I ran across, the ones I fed in my own house on holidays, had nothing on these guys. This movie, watching this movie, as a civilian, and they're gonna um, be in combat uh, the little I silky was blown away. It broke my heart. We uh, have my no idea what today's veteran <laughs> has, deal, has, has been dealing with, what they deal with when they get home. It, it, it's a whole new, it's a whole new yeah, ball game. Registered mm -hmm. 11. Um, so what I was watching and hearing the vets in the audience laugh in certain er in certain sections of the film, which made me realize, okay, they're either so disassociated with it that they see it funny, or they're using it as a defense to deal with what they're dealing with in their own mind. Up until now, we've really had no idea. We've had no idea. We don't know a damn thing. And it's no wonder we can't help them. We've been asking all the wrong questions. She says this to me, and I about strangled her with love because I was so grateful. She articulated so fucking brilliantly. She articulated better than I had the true um, power for one, the laughter, and for two, the opportunity to um, get to know combat veterans better. It's a beautiful thing. We had a great moment. And she was she was like coaching me. She was like, I think you need to take this movie all over the bases, all over the country. Show it to everybody. People need to see it. <sighs> oh God. That's what the fuck we got going on. Really, really cool thing over there at the VFW. Hope you guys uh, keep, keep on watching and sharing it with your friends because uh, these dudes love it. I'd say put 10 Marines in the room. I'd say eight out of eight out of 10 are hysterically laughing. Staff Sergeant's in below. <laughs> uh, soldiers, I'll say five or six out of 10. Navy, three to five, Air Force. C civilians, I don't know. Civilians, I'd say two out of 10. But then if you narrow it down to like, you know, the fans of Eastbound and Down, Eastbound and Down's heart, best, truest fans, bet they fucking love it. 10 out of 10. Yeah, share it with your friends. I think that's what we're, we're going with here. I think we're done here. It's kind of like something valuable. Uh, oh, go buy the motherfucking movie already. Come on. Don't laugh at my shit and look at all the grunt side clips and then not buy it. You know you're gonna like it. If you saw the show, just know it is the same shit, just redone with fucking a couple new scenes, but new um, sound design. Lots of like funny shit going on in the background. So you gotta watch it on f good fucking speakers, surround sound or headphones. Don't, don't fuck that up. Don't watch it on a regular TV. Put it on your, your iPad with headphones on. Cause there's so much in the sound design that's funny. I wanted to do that cause I wanted people to get multiple fucking views. I wanted, I want, I want you guys to identify a whole bunch of new things uh, every time you watch it. Uh, there's that much depth to it. Fucking do that. And, and then a musical score. That's the other fucking thing too. The music hits you fucking just right. If you, if you dig that, if you find it funny, it hits, you, it hits you just right. If you want season two, then definitely fucking buy it. Because we don't have the money for season two. So it either doesn't happen or we make the fucking money to make this happen. If you want season two, consider this the fucking Kickstarter, guys. Come on. We're in this goddamn fucking business. Guys, Googling Vet TV free are fucking killing me. Fucks. 
He'll come around. I'm certain of it. All right. Have a good night. Take care of yourselves.